Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited to introduce to you a very special guest of mine, and it's Nicole. Now, before we begin, I just want to mention to everybody that I will be giving away my book, Empower Yourself, Don't Let Your Conditions Empower You, and you can find this on coachstacychalemi.com slash free book. And you'll be able to pick up a free copy of this book. And I'm also giving away a 30 minute coaching session with me. So if you go on to uh, coachstacychalemi.com and you'll see uh, an area on the top of the menu that you could just hit and schedule a free coaching session. It'll be a 30 minute coaching session and we'll get to know each other and see how I could help you improve your life and become the ideal person that you want to be. So Nicole, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Stacey, thank you so much for having me on today. Um, so my name is Nicole Lonnie, and I am a certified health coach. I'm a functional nutritionist, and I'm a functional blood work specialist. So I really specialize in a lot of autoimmune and chronic illnesses, where we turn that around using your blood work and give you healing and hope to actually get better and get off your prescriptions. And so you can live a healthier life. Yes, I, I agree with that. You know, now I, you know, a lot of people don't realize the difference between functional medicine um, and they don't understand it very well. Um, they get kind of scared about hormone therapy. Um, they get, they don't realize that there's a difference between functional um, blood work and regular primary um, blood work that you get from your primary physician or, um, you know, so when people are doing blood work, can you explain why there is a difference between regular blood work that your primary physician will, you know, uh, write a prescription for versus a, a, a functional medicine doctor and why it's really important for that person to actually consider maybe going to a functional medicine doctor to get a functional medicine blood workout? So it's interesting because what a doctor orders and what a functional specialist will order, whether it's a practitioner or a doctor, Oftentimes they're the same blood test, which is interesting. They're just read a little differently. And doctors are very hesitant to, um, not all doctors, let's, you know, um, but a lot of doctors are hesitant to order a full blood work panel. So they're either restricted or I'll give you an example. So if you were to have a complete blood work panel done, that would include your thyroid hormone, right? And often doctors will say, well, I'll run a TSH, but I won't run a whole thyroid panel or right. they'll do a CBC and they won't do a CBC with differential and a CBC with differential gives us on a functional level, so much more information about what's going on with your, with you and, and your blood work and why you might not be feeling well. And so it's, it's really important to know what you should be asking for, whether you're seeing a traditional doctor, or if you're seeing a functional practitioner of any kind of what test behoove you, you know, like what, what should you be getting every year? What should you be getting every few years? Because a lot of people don't know. And what's interesting to me is like, you see all these TV ads for medications and a lot of people go into their doctor, they self-diagnose or they use Dr. Google, right? And they'll go in and they'll ask for certain medications, but they never go in and say, oh, I want these blood tests done. Right. right? So, so I think it's really important for us to know, number one, what blood test should we be getting? Number two, how, um, you know, that we actually should own, we own our blood work. We own any scans that we do. And a lot of people don't even know that if they don't have a portal, you know, we have these little computers that we walk around with in our hands now. And oftentimes there are portals that we can go in and actually get our records, but there's still a lot of doctors that don't do that. So it's really important that you realize that your scans and your blood work and those belong to you and they do not charge you. They should not be charging you for those. They should willingly go, here you are, here's your, here's your blood work and let me hand it over to you. And so that's important as well, especially, unfortunately, people end up in the hospital. And what happens is, is you have, God knows that you get awakened how many times, you know, if you, even if you give birth or whatever, like even for minor things going on in the hospital, they take your blood work two, three, four times a day sometimes, right? Or your vitals. All of that information belongs to you. And yeah. so- it's really important that you ask when you're at, you ask your nurses to give you copies 
of everything that happens because once you leave that hospital, guess what happens? If you need your blood work and you go back, they charge you for it. They charge you time basically for somebody to make a copy and give it to you. Right. So, so it's really important that we actually get physical copies of it. Now, how it's read is different than how doctors read it and how functional practitioners read it as well. And Mm -hmm. on the functional level, we read things on a smaller scale. Our scales are so big in the traditional medicine world. So vitamin D, for example, runs from zero to a hundred, right? If you're between 32 and hundred, a doctor will say, oh, you have plenty of vitamin D. But on the functional level, we know that your vitamin D level should be at 80 plus. Right. It's super important that your vitamin D should be at 80 plus. So we want to see it in the 80 to 100 scale. So on the functional level, we do read it differently based on thousands and thousands of clients of how they actually feel when they're in those ranges, not just a generic thing. So a lot of people will go to the doctor and they'll have blood work, especially women. This is very common with women. And a doctor will say, oh, your blood work looks fine. They never discuss with you and go through what each test means, right? And they'll say, oh, your blood work looks fine. And somebody will say, oh, I just don't feel good. And -hmm. they'll say, well, what are your symptoms? And they'll give you a prescription for a symptom. And so basically, they're just not even looking at what's really going on with you, what's truly like at the heart of the problem. And they, they just mask symptoms. So we always say, don't mask your symptoms. Don't chase your symptoms. Let's see why, what the imbalances are because anything that's imbalanced, we can balance. Right. And they have to realize that symptoms could be a lot of different things. And you have to, you know, it, just taking a medication might mask that one symptom, but there's a root cause for that. So the, right. the doctor doesn't actually dig deep and try to figure out what the root cause, why you're getting these symptoms, the actual condition is not going to go away. It's probably going to actually get worse. And, you know, and a lot of times people don't realize that something's going on until their, their uh, symptoms are intense. And then, you know, by then they have a a pretty serious condition that they're dealing with and issues that they could have prevented if they actually found the root cause early on. And I think that's one of the main things between functional medicine doctors and, you know, your regular primary physician or medical care doctor, because also, you know, when I go for functional medicine blood work, they are very extensive. You know, I used to get 12 vials of blood. They checked for everything underneath the sun. And, you my other doctor would check for like, you know, maybe four or five things and, you know, your primary regular things, you know, high blood pressure they look for, they look for your thyroid, you know, certain things on your thyroid, they would look, you know, and to see what your cholesterol levels are and your basic stuff, you know, that every doctor checks, but, sure. you know, a functional medicine doctor will, will check for almost everything, you know, everything. Good and then they'll also, even if, it, if if their blood work is normal, if they see the numbers are just a tad a little high, they will make you aware of it. And they will also, a good functional medicine doctor will give you suggestions and say, well, you know, you're, you're not, a, it's not at a problem right now, but maybe you should do X, Y, and Z. So the numbers get lower and it doesn't become a problem in the future. And I think that's a, a great thing that, you know, functional medicine doctors do and that people don't realize it's not always about, you know, finding, you know, getting, getting the medications for a symptom, but finding the root cause and then at treating the root cause, you know, and a lot of times doctors nowadays, I think in the healthcare system too, we only, they have 15 minutes to see a patient and then they have to go to the next patient. So how much can you actually learn and treat in 15 minutes? In 15 minutes, I can usually look at somebody's blood work, 15, 20 minutes. And I can tell you if you have a low grade infection, that's never been taken care of, whether it's viral, bacterial, or fungal. I can tell if you have any kind of autoimmune condition going on almost immediately just by looking at your CBC with differential, which most doctors just don't even diagnose. I can tell if you have parasites just by your blood work that you already have where you're not going out and doing these extensive parasite testing. Mm -hmm. Um, We can look at your cholesterol and see what's really going on with your cholesterol because Oftentimes we have high cholesterol and it has absolutely nothing to do with the food that we eat. Sometimes it does, but oftentimes it has something to do with their hormones, their blood sugar, even their thyroid. And that's why the cholesterol levels are off. 
Um, I can also tell if somebody is missing any enzymes, if they're not getting enough enzymes into their system. And what else can we tell in just 15 minutes? Um, we can, I'm looking at a cheat sheet now. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we can look, oh, to see if you have leaky gut. If yes, you have a, yes. if you have a full yes. panel done, I can actually tell within that same 15, 20 minute period that a doctor will see you. If you truly have leaky gut, um, that will definitely show in your blood work and I'll know your vitamin D levels. So I can look at quite a bit in 15 minutes and really give you a lot of answers to the piece of the puzzle of why you're truly not feeling good, whether it's lack of energy, different symptoms, um, you know, it, why you might have constipation, diarrhea, why you have IBS issues. Yeah. Number yeah. numbers don't lie. It's just sometimes they need to be read a little bit differently. And on mm -hmm. the functional world, that's what we do. We really look at um, numbers a little differently and we can put the pieces together within 30 minutes. I can usually give somebody a plan or I can actually, I don't diagnose, you know, I, but I, I do see, like I said, what's out of balance and how do we balance it back out naturally where you're not taking metformin and statins and all these medications that for blood pressure and those things that can, we can simply take care of, you know, yeah. on a holistic level. You know, statins are so bad for you. And you see primary care physicians and medical physicians always pushing the statins. Oh, your, your cholesterol level is a little high here. Take a cholesterol medicine. I suggest this one to you, but then, you know, they have such harsh side effects. You know, I'll give you an example. My mother was put on a high cholesterol medication, high cholesterol. It genetically runs in our family. So she, they put her on this, this cholesterol medicine. And because especially older um, people, they tend to just do whatever the doctor says, because that's what they grew up with, with that mentality. So she starts taking the high cholesterol medicine. And shortly after she starts getting joint pain. And she starts getting, she says, I have fibromyalgia. I have fibromyalgia. And I'm like, I'm like, okay. And then I said, I said, you know, those statins you take are really bad for you. So then she decides to take half of that pill. And with, within a day, all those joint pains went away. And when she stopped taking the, the pill completely, she felt a hundred percent better. She wasn't fatigued. She didn't have joint pain and the swelling went away. So that's just one example. Maybe you can explain to people why that medication, you know, statins are so bad for people and that they shouldn't, you know, there are other ways, you know, sometimes people do have to go on medications, but there are lots of ways to prevent, you know, a lot of people from going on those medications. There is so many ways. I actually read a, I started reading an article um, I have an Apple phone, so I get Apple news, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a big news person, but when I see something that kind of catches my eye, I'll, I'll hop on it. So it was actually an article about epigenetics. So genetically, we're 99% all about the same. It's our epigenetics that make us different. So, um, so with our, so I'm fascinated with epigenetics. So I started you, reading this. I'm just going to interrupt you. Tell them what epigenetics is so they know. So, Epigenetics is really what sets us apart. It's what makes us different. It makes, it's what we're made up of. So humans are 99 point, like almost 9% the same DNA, but our personal, what makes us different is our epigenetics. So, um, and so that's what brands each one of us, right? Mm -hmm. To make us each different. And through DNA, we can actually now tell, a lot of people use like ancestry.com or places like that to find out what nationalities they are. But now we're using DNA to actually know what you're pre predisposed for, right? Like what genes and SNPs, they call them SNPs, S-N-P-S. So um, what SNPs that you actually have, like I have an Alzheimer's gene. And I'm at very high risk for Alzheimer's. But what we know is just because you have that gene and it's been passed down, doesn't mean you're going to have the disease. We yeah. just know that we have to keep that gene turned off. It's like a switch, right? Yeah. So what do I need to do to keep that turned off so I don't get Alzheimer's? So that's always on the front of my mind because that's the least thing that I want, right? And other things show up as well. Mm -hmm. And so those are the things that are passed down. And it shows up in our epigenetics and it's what is our blueprint. It's our personal blueprint of what our makeup is. So I started reading this article about, I thought, epigenetics. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I start getting, I mean, it's not, a. it was a substantial article, but then I started laughing because it really was about statins. 
<laughs> so now by the time I'm done reading this article, I'm fuming. Have you ever read something that just like, like, oh my goodness, they put things in print. And then, like you said, your mother, you know, who's older, obviously, is, yeah. you know, she believes everything the doctors tell you or that everything that you read. And by the time I was done reading this article, I went onto Facebook. <laughs> I don't usually do this. And I had to write all about statins because I was just so angry. So just as yeah. your mom, my husband at the time, this was my ex-husband, obviously now, mm -hmm. um, had uh, some heart issues. So anytime you have any kind of heart issues, they automatically put you on the eight pill cocktail is what I call it. They give you something for blood pressure. They give you a beta blocker. They give you something for whether you have high cholesterol or no high cholesterol, they give you a statin. They give you, and they give you this cocktail meds and say, here's, here's your care package. And I yeah. want you to take this for the rest of your life because this right. will prevent everything. Exactly. And it really is like the cocktail, I call it. Right. So of course they give him the cocktail. So he's taking these statins because he's scared, right? You know, anytime you have some heart issues, it's scary. Yeah. And within two days, he literally couldn't get out of bed mm -hmm. at all. He couldn't physically move his legs to get out of bed. Well, this is what this article was about. And so what it was saying was that there are people that in their epigenetics, they've discovered that have this severe response to statins that it's passed down into from a gene. So this is why I thought the article was about the epigenetics, but it really was about statins. Right. And so, and so it goes on to talk about how many prescriptions for statins are written every year. So what happened with my husband is I actually had him to stop taking it immediately Right. Right. And it took a few days before he, all the pain left his body, but yes. his was so severe that he couldn't even move. And wow. so a lot of people get these stiff joints. So in this article, um, they write over 10 million prescriptions for statins a year. That is insane. That right. Is insane. And here are the side effects. It's so funny. Headache, dizziness, feeling sick. Well, what does that mean? But this is their thing, feeling sick, feeling unusually tired or physically weak, digestive system problems such as constipation, diarrhea, indigestion, or farting, which I think is funny that they put on their thing or farting um, <laughs> because that's so, you know, like, okay, <laughs> muscle pain, sleep problems, low blood uh, low blood platelet count so it can lower your platelet count, memory problems, hair loss, pins and needles. This is on their own website. Inflammation of the liver, which is hepatitis, which can cause flu-like symptoms. Inflammation of the pancre uh, pancreas, mm -hmm. which can cause stomach pain, skin problems, such as acne or itchy red rash. Sexual problems, such as loss of libido, reduced sex drive, or erectile dysfunction. Muscle weakness, which is, this is what most people feel is this pain in yeah. their muscles. Loss of sensation or tingling in the nerve endings of the hands and the feet, tendon problems, and muscle effects. 30% of the people, and they know this for a fact, 30% of these people experience sore and achy muscles, especially in the upper arms and legs. 30%. Mm -hmm. So 30% of 10 million people is 3 million people are walking around in the United States thinking that they might have fibromyalgia or stiff or whatever, because they're taking a statin. Right. 1% have the extreme, like my husband did 1%. Yeah. That's a hundred thousand people. Isn't that crazy? Can't move their arms or legs because they're taking a statin. Yes. And so it just kills me when I look at Oh my goodness, this, those numbers. So in that, that's what the article was about. Say, like, well, now we know that that 1%, it is part of their epigenetics or a gene that's been passed down or SNP that's been passed down to them. So now we're creating a medication <laughs> to give people who have that, that gene, this medication while they're taking their statin so that right. they don't have a problem. 
Well, I, you know, my doc, I, I, like I said, my mother has it because it's genetic. So I got the high cholesterol. So I, you know, when my doctors told me they wanted to put me on a statin. I said, no, I'm not going on a statin. I said, I'm going to do it naturally. So I put myself on a specific food diet and supplement diet. And I went down about 40 points. And it's still, when I saw her, she still said, I'd still like to put you on a statin. I said, well, I just saw you several months ago and I got down like 30 points, you know, or 40 points. And you still want to push that statin on me. I said, no, I said, I could probably get it down more. You know, if I did it 30 or 40 points, you know, between that three month period, I could get it to go, you know, down a lot. You know, a lot of times it's our yeah. diet. You know, people don't realize it's that we set ourselves up by the foods we eat. We experience so many different problems and people don't realize that they're jeopardizing and destroying their bodies because of the foods and the choices they make in their lifestyle. Every day. So as a nutritionist, that's, you know, a big thing for me is what are people eating? And yes. and our our American diet is, let's face it, it's trash. Right. Oh, We're eating. I think the thing for <laughs> you ever want to see make a nutritionist go bonkers is go to a state fair and watch what people are eating. Oh my God. Right? Yes. It is yeah. like just the most revolting thing ever. <laughs> and I understand people are going to go have a treat once in a while, but the amounts of food and the liquid cheese and the dairy and the stuff on top of stuff because, you know, this foodie culture was really created in the last 20 years. And a lot of these foodie shows were, you know, and yes. people want it to be a foodie. Well, when did becoming, enjoying delicious, nutritious and healthy healing recipes ever become exactly. like, like a foodie, you know, like with exactly. garbage food, like things that aren't good for you. Cause I believe that we can have healing recipes that are delicious that taste oh amazing God, so many of them out there you know you talk to yeah. chefs that you know that, that believe more on the health end you'll see them create such healthy meals without all that butter without all that salt and the food will taste delicious you know exactly. my daughter made zucchini spaghetti not, not too long ago you couldn't even tell it was zucchini and it tasted delicious you know there are so many ways to eat healthy. It's just people hear the, the healthy thing and they cringe, but I can't understand why we are in our culture where we have such large portions of food. If you know the, the actual amount of portions we're supposed to eat, why are they given such large portions in all these places? You go to France, for instance, or you go to Europe, the portion size is so small, but the food is so natural. And it's like really picked in their backyards, practically, that you get full on those small portions. And the key is because it's natural. It doesn't have any of those, you know, artificial ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it plays a difference on your digestive tract. It absolutely does. And, you know, when I look at cholesterol, let's go back to that for just a minute. Uh -huh. And then, and food. So it's interesting with cholesterol and your doctor was like, still, you know, go back on statins. And so, you know, one of the big things is triglycerides. So people will say, oh, my triglycerides are, are off. And that comes down to, we're talking about food. So that comes down to healthy fats, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. when you say healthy fats, people are so blindsided by that, that mm -hmm. aren't in the healthy world, right? Mm -hmm. And so, or the nutrition world. So healthy fats are really things like avocados and coconut oil, avocado oil, um, yeah. you know, olive oil, those healthy fats, MCT oil. Yeah. And those are super important for us to get consumed every single day of our life in some form or another. And yeah. so oftentimes we see triglycerides and it's like, oh, wait, you know, when we're looking at overall cholesterol and I go, okay, do they have enough healthy fats? That's always the first question I look at. Or do they have a blood sugar regulation problem? Are they insulin resistant? Because if there's people that aren't losing weight, we usually will, can tell if they're insulin resistant. And then the yeah. next thing I look at is, do they have an issue with their thyroid? Because yes. often, and people don't realize this, high cholesterol, even triglycerides, if their thyroid is off, their cholesterol is going to be off. It's very, and very hand in hand. People and people have. don't realize how interconnected our whole body is and yeah. that our cholesterol, like I said, if your thyroid is off, your cholesterol more than likely is going to be off as well. 100%. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. 
So we can definitely tell that. But when it comes to eating in Europe and different countries, you know, I love that you brought that up. Their food is so healthy, but the more nutrient dense foods that we eat, the fuller we feel. Yeah. And we don't need all those fillers. And oftentimes, um, a friend of mine did a po- does a podcast every day. She's done a podcast every day for the last four years. Yesterday was her four year anniversary. That's awesome. And so she had a she had a friend of mine actually who talked her into doing this podcast. So she had him on to like celebrate four years. Yeah. And he brought up the fact that I'm doing a cooking show of you know how to make healthy and healing recipes, and. I was just kind of laughing because they were talking about, she says, oh my goodness, Nicole came on my show and started talking about food labels. She says, now I'm like, I thought I knew how to read food labels, but I really didn't know how to read food labels. Most and people that, don't. Most people don't. And I think that's such a big key as well. When, you know, when we're talking about like making those adjustments into our health, how many things, if there was just one thing that they could take out of their diet that affects their gut and their cholesterol and their overall health is to take out anything with xanthan gum, gower gum, anything that says gum. Yes. Should It's just a preservative that really wreaks havoc on our system, uh, on our system. When you go over to Europe, you're not going to see any foods that have anything with gum in it. You don't see xanthan gum. You don't see acacia gum. You don't see gower gum. And those are so toxic to our, our immune system. They're taught, they create leaky gut. They cause our numbers to be so skewed when we're eating these preservatives. They cause, you know, young women to develop a lot faster than what they should be with their hormones. Right. So there's a lot that happens with the gums. <laughs> yeah. So it all, and it ties all back into our health and our blood work and, and, and how it skews our numbers as well. And the gower gums and the acacia gums, they actually affect, especially with young women and their hormones and, you know, their menstrual cycles, it really throws everything off as well. Oh, it does. You know, girls are starting to menstruate by the age of eight. You know, they're starting to go through menstruation and their, their, you know, their breasts are starting to grow already, you know, past the, the point where, where they should be. And, you know, a lot of parents aren't getting it. They're not realizing that they're feeding their children foods with unhealthy hormones in it. And I always say there's a great book called Vegan vs. Vegetarian. And it doesn't mean you have to be a vegan or veg- vegetarian, right. but she basically wanted to explain what they do to the cows, what they do to the chickens. You know, she wanted to, to give people an eye of what they're putting in their bodies. And this is what you're allowing in your bodies. And after you read that book, you never want to eat another piece of meat ever again because you're just like disgusted or you know or you you're like if you eat, eat eggs you make sure that you buy them organically after that book you want to you change your whole diet just by reading that book but it was terrible because you know they they stuff hundreds of cows in one small little compacted area their hoofs are malformed because there's so many cows they have no room to walk so their hoofs adjust to the space that they're given and if one cow gets infected they shoot that cow with antibiotics and then they'll shoot every single cow in that room or in that area that they have all the cows with antibiotics. So not only, and they give them hormones so they can pump more milk out. So you're having the hormones, you're having antibiotics, and that's all going into the milk that these people are drinking. And, you know, the same thing goes with eggs. You know, they they put hormones in the chickens. They want them to have bigger eggs. You know, when you see organic eggs, they're smaller. Well, you know, that you look at non-organic eggs, they're nice and big. Oh, wow, these look, you're getting more for your money but you're not, you're actually damaging your body because you're, you're eating eggs that have hormones in it and your whole body is run by hormones. So by putting these unhealthy hormones in your body, you're throwing off the whole inner chemistry of your body and things are going to happen. Absolutely. And my family is actually from part of my family is from Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was fortunate to meet them four years ago. So I didn't know my dad's side of the family till recently. Talk about Uh DNA. So, and (laughs) I was super excited to meet my dad's family. And so of course they're taking me, they're all farmers and, you know, well, not all of them now, the new generation, a lot of them are getting away from farmers, but a lot of farms, I mean, where they live, it is cornfield after soybean field after sugar beans. That's all there is. There, yeah, right. Yeah. So there's not a lot in the middle part of Nebraska <laughs> and cows, <laughs> lots of cows. 
but their cows are beef cows, right? They're, they're not dairy cows. They're actually, you know, for beef. So they have all this beautiful land and these cows are out there eating on all these hills. And then, and I will only eat grass fed beef. So if it's not grass fed, fed organic beef, it doesn't go into my, I don't consume it. Well, right. that people all should do that is that, yeah, you know, exactly. that's one healthy component that people all should consider doing. Yeah. And Much so more. they drove me by, my cousin drove me by a fattening farm, which is what they're talking about in the book, vegan versus vegetarian. Yeah. So there's thousands of like when, when she was talking about in this small area, you should see the large areas that they have these cows in it, the beef cows. So we're talking like 10,000 cows at a time. Like it is a crate. Like I've never seen so many cows. I live by some dairy cows here in California, but it's amazing when you see, like, it's like a sea of cows. <laughs> it's crazy that. That how many amazing. cows there are, but the, here's what they do at these fattening farms. They give them corn and Horse they give them oats because they're going to fatten up these cows. So they've had all the Basically, these cows for the last year have been grass fed, bar like they're beautiful. And then they bring them to these fattening farms. And for six weeks, they literally stuff them full of oats and corn. And so that just turns into sugar. So then when you're buying these meats, that's why people get diabetes. And, you know, that's one of the reasons, you know, that causes absolutely. diabetes is, you know, those corns and those oats, you know, we were yeah. not meant to eat those things. And no, and the, people are like, oatmeal is good for you. And I'm like, no, oatmeal is what they use to fatten cows. Yeah. So, <laughs> and so, and, and oats um, simulate gluten in our body. And so, and most of our bodies can't absorb all the gluten and, and, you know, and, and, and digest gluten. So, you know, I'm like, no, but oats are what, you, oats are what they fatten cows with. And so are yeah. corn. And then the corn is subsidized and it's just sugar. And then we get all the sugar in the meat. So I always tell everybody it's so important to buy grass-fed meat. And, and it broke my heart because here I am like, oh my gosh, these fields are amazing that these cows are in. And then I saw the reality <laughs> mm -hmm. and it was shocking. Like I said, it was like seas of cow. Like it was yeah. like a sea of cows. I've never seen so many cows in my life. And now every time we go to Nebraska, because I try to go a couple of times a year, I'm always like, when we're driving by, <laughs> like, I don't want to see it because I know I don't, what you mean. Yes. You know, it's just you hard to watch. Is, yeah. You know mm -hmm. what they do um, because they want more money. You know, it all comes down to the fatter they are, the more they weigh, the more money we get for each cow, the more beef it produces. But really what you're getting is just so much sugar laden into your meat. And like you said, that's what causes diabetes and heart issues and, and all the things that are. So even things that we think are natural for us, like meat can contain so many of those bad things, whether it's hormones or sugars. So we yeah. really need to be so careful about what we put in our bodies because we don't want it showing up in this crazy thing called blood work. And, and in our, our United States alone, we are so, our obesity levels have increased tremendously. Our diabetes levels have increased mm -hmm. tremendously. Heart problems have increased from it tremendously. You know, cancer has increased tremendously. You know, millions of years ago, thousands of years ago, when people walked the earth, they didn't have these problems, you know, and, you know, they didn't suffer from these symptoms and issues. Why? It's because we've changed our diets to very unhealthy diets. You know, our unhealthy. body was not meant for those oats, those wheats, those grains, you know, dairy. That, that, yeah, dairy, especially, you know, there was a doctor who wrote a book and he talked about how dairy can pr practically, it kills the body, it destroys the body over time because there's so many unhealthy components in dairy, even though so many people, we all like our cheeses, you know, dairy is not meant for the body. And, you know, it's, it's a very unhealthy resource. The harder the cheese it is, the better it is for our body. Yes. So that part is, you know, so if you have something more like a Parmesan or Romano, those are actually right. better for us than the actual soft cheeses, as you probably know. Um, but it's interesting to see, like if somebody set, comes to me and says, oh my goodness, I've been having sinus issues and right. I get these sinus infections over and over and over again. The first thing I say is you need to stop dairy immediately. Yeah. And they look at me like I have, you know, two heads because right. the first thing dairy does is it will congest this entire area. Yes, and so will. usually, usually when I see people, you know, it's so funny, you can, 
when you've been in the industry for so long, you can look at people and go, oh, they have this. <laughs> you can just look at somebody and go, oh, I, I know they have this going on with them. But my husband's a doctor. He does the same thing. He'll see somebody and he's like, he diagnoses them without even meeting them because he can just see the symptoms of certain behaviors or the way they're walking or the way, you know, they're doing something and he would know right away. Yeah. yeah that's how I, you know, you just look and you know. So, so sinus infections, nine out of 10 times, nine and a half out of 10 times, I would even say is usually caused by dairy. And oftentimes yeah. the other half a percent is caused by parasites, right. which comes in food as well. And so, you know, it's interesting to see like, you know, there's so many things that can cause illness that's in yeah. our food and in our diet. And yet you'll come across those people that will say, oh, but I can take this one pill and I don't have to change anything. Exactly. Well, that's a that's a good majority of our society. And it you know, is. most of the foods in you know in in other countries ban a, most of the foods in America. They won't let let it come into their countries because it doesn't fit their qualifications. You know, so you go into you know I went to Europe and they were I never saw a healthy McDonald's. That was the first time I saw they were selling salads at McDonald's. Who sells salad at McDonald's? You know, you see over here it's like the big it's like the Whopper and the and the Big Mac and big this. Mac. And you know, over you know? there, they have apples and pears and salads. And I was like, wow, because, you know, my kids saw the, the double arches. They wanted to go in. But, you know, it was, you know, it's it's the French way fries, McDonald's French fries. If anybody ever wants to know what's an American oh, French God. fry, McDonald's, just Google it, you guys. Just Google it. Um, Google what are the ingredients in McDonald's French fries. So vegans, if you're watching, do not eat Please don't eat McDonald's French fries. There is actually meat byproduct in their French fries, which is crazy. Um, you know, if you're dairy free, don't eat their don't eat their French fries. There's actually whey and other and other things in their French fries as well. And so it's very interesting that McDonald's French fries have here in the states have all these ingredients. In Europe, they have literally potato salt and the cooking oil that they use that yeah. in so because they don't allow all of that in Europe so McDonald's in Europe is very different or anywhere in the world is very different than what we eat here in the United States there was a viral TikTok recently on a Canadian who actually did a thing on ketchup on Heinz ketchup oh, because really? she when she moved to the United States they just packed up all of their stuff and their dry foods right and they brought everything yeah. over with them so she and her husband had moved to the States. Well, within a few months, she wasn't feeling well and she couldn't figure out why she wasn't feeling well. She couldn't like about six months into her being here. Well, it was food she was consuming. So she had noticed she had an American bottle of ketchup and the uh, Heinz, and then she had her Canadian bottle of ketchup and the ingredients were totally different. So there was all kinds of preservatives and sugars and whatever in our ketchup the U.S. Yeah. ketchup. And then in her ketchup, it was totally different. It was like tomato puree and some other things. And then she started really looking at labels and she was absolutely stunned because yes. it was that conception of, oh my goodness, why are they adding this in this product? So it started with a bottle of Heinz ketchup for her. And she yeah. literally went viral on TikTok, which is great because it's opening eyes. I love yeah. when anybody in our industry, in the in the wellness industry, starts doing those things. And here she was, just this person who was like, "Wait, why is why am I not feeling well?" But that shows you what can happen from leaving one country, coming into our country, and eating our foods. And in mm -hmm. six months, she was actually physically ill. I believe so, it. Yeah. I cut out Sugar, I cut out mayonnaise, I cut out ketchup, and I actually felt better. And you just, if you know, if you need something on your meat or, or you need, you know, you love that ketchup or mayonnaise, you could find alternatives. There's healthy alternatives out there that you don't need that, you know, even if you use balsamic vinegar, you could use that, you know, if you like the taste of it, you could use it as a substitute for, the, you know, if you're having a sandwich, let's say if you want that sandwich, you know, and there's so many different ways to compensate. There is so many ways. So I just started a cooking show on YouTube and oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. and so that. it's all about healthy and healing recipes. So, um, and that's what we do. We find substitutes, like we find substitutes or we, or we teach you some of the things of how easy it can be to actually prepare meals. Cause I think people are so afraid to 
take that leap of like, oh my goodness, I'm not a good cook or it has to be hard. And so you see me in my real kitchen in, you know, like making the mistakes, like really mm-hmm. like being just being a normal person in a kitchen, but this is how easy it can really be. And I think that's something that I, I just really wish they would do more and more. When I was growing up, I'm probably much older than you are. <laughs> when I was growing up, we had home ec in school. Did you have home ec in school? We did have home ec, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they taught us how to sew and they taught us how to cook. And um, mostly girls took the class. Most boys didn't want that elective. And I think it was pushed on women. There are girls a lot more back then as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that was society back then, right? You grow up, you my, get married. My son actually took the uh, the cooking classes in high school. And he said he wanted to meet girls. That was his way of meeting girls. Take the Smart cooking class. boy. <laughs> <laughs> my, son, my son joined a dance club after school, a swing dance club, so he could learn how to, so he would dance with the girls because that's what he wanted. So we have smart <laughs> boys. <laughs> So, and I thought, you know, we don't have cooking classes in in high school anymore here. You know, I think less and less schools have all of these electives like we used to growing up. But I thought, wouldn't it be fascinating if we actually brought cooking back into schools and taught these young, young people how to cook healthy and how to eat? Because as they're leaving the gate and becoming young adults... You know, it's we want healthy. them to make healthy choices. Yeah, because I see what kids are eating. And I see how kids are gotten so obese and it so bothers good. me. And I don't like the way society is glorifying it. Oh, it's yeah. okay to be obese. It's okay to be heavy. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you look on the outside. It's what a person is on the inside. But let's think of it from a health perspective. You know, if someone is overweight and they're carrying that weight, they're they're opening themselves up to diabetes. They're opening themselves up to heart, heart problems. You know, it's harder for people, the more weight they gain, for to, to walk around, to get places. You know, you're, you, there's so many diseases that could occur from being so overweight many. and not to over- mention like even knee replacements if you look at yes. how many knee replacements so many mm-hmm. people like I understand as you're older if you've had physical jobs right right my my son-in-law has had a physical job all his life where he's been on his knees right a lot right. and so mm-hmm. his knees literally have worn down and that can happen if for overuse yes. but so many people are having knee replacements because of their weight Yes. Weight has really impacted their their knees. And yeah. the amount of knee replacements every year now have, you know, just as we were talking about diabetes going up and, and knee replacements. If you start looking up how many knee replacements are done in the US, it's yeah. insane. And a lot of those have been because of weight. Yes. And that's an issue, you know, and then what happens is that they don't heal as well either because they still have this weight on. So you would almost think it would be a prerequisite to lose 20, 30, 40, hundred pounds, depending on the person to exactly. get that weight down before they have a surgery like that. In yeah. other words, they're never going to heal correctly. And then what do they do? They go in for another surgery or another yeah. surgery. Well, so certain- oftentimes they have two or three. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have problems afterwards, you know, anytime you do surgery and you open yourself up, you know, to oxygen and your body is exposed, your body changes and it's never the same. And a lot of times when people do those type of surgeries, they don't always last. And after X amount of years, you know, something goes wrong and they have to get, you know, another knee replacement or another, another surgery done, you know, and people really need to take these things into consideration, you know our world, you know, is going to shits, you know, as it's really, we have to, you know, we really need to look at things, you know, and, and we are, you know, I think because as people are getting healthier now for your, your YouTube website, you know, where do we go to see your videos? Good vibes cooking show on you on YouTube. Oh, awesome. I can't wait to visit it. I love it. I love it. And you said you're going to be launching a cookbook soon. I am. I'm launching the Good Vibes Healthy Healing Recipes. So it should be coming out in the fall, just in time for the holidays. So what a great book to give, you know, family, friends, anybody that you want to be healthy, where they're super simple, delicious recipes. Now, your website, do you include like a blog and and maybe different things that people could actually learn from? I do. Here's the here's the honest truth. My website is down this week. It will mm-hmm. be back up and running next week. I'm super excited, but it is called um, helpyougethealthy.com. Okay. 
Love and it. There, there is a blog, there is recipes, there is food, there's information about functional blood work, um, how it all ties in together and it all works. So yeah, so Excellent. it's um, helpyougethealthy.com. Now, if people want to contact you, maybe something they learn from the show today, or if they have a health question they want to approach you with, is there an easy way to get a hold of you? Should they go directly to your website or do you have social media or email you want to share? I do have social media. I'm on Instagram at help you get healthy. I am on Facebook at help you get healthy. Um, You can find us on, on Facebook under that as well. So messenger works great. My personal email is Nicole at, and it's different, of course, Nicole at cell, C-E-L-L healthcoach.com. I love it. So you do coaching also. So you do provide coaching for people? I do. Yeah. Yeah. We, oh, I excellent. definitely coach. Now, our big thing is um, wellness programs to help people really get off their medications, um, start eating better, really give them strong nutrition programs and doing any kind of cellular detox that they might need. Um, whether they've been on medications, they've had diabetes, they've had um, autoimmune issues. We actually do a cellular detox so they can start actually healing those cells because yes. unhealthy cells create unhealthy cells. So we want healthy healing cells. So um, so that's what we do with our programs. And there's plenty of those, plenty of recipes on the new website, um, plenty of information, blogs that they can get all kinds of uh, valuable information. You know, I, I love it. And I inspire, you know, everything that you're doing. It's you know, people need to really learn. And that, you know, your coaching sessions, are they Zoom? If someone that doesn't live by you, can they go on Zoom and have sessions with you? Yes, I have clients all over the world at this point. It's amazing. You know, when the pandemic happened, there were so many, I closed my center. I actually had a physical walk-in center and I was heartbroken, right? Because it was my baby. And then when you go virtual, you realize that it opens it up where people can find you from around the world. So I do have clients in Canada and Europe. Um, I have clients in Africa right now and the United States. So it's really kind of fascinating that you can actually zoom can do just about anything these days and you can have clients worldwide. So So that's excellent. So they can find that at your website. Also your coaching services. Correct. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. I love this. I love this. You know, I, I thank you so much for coming on this show. I am so glad that you're here to show people how they don't have to rely on medications and medication is only a temporary fix. And a lot of times there's so many adverse effects and so many long-term issues that can occur with long-term usage of medications. So, you know, you could change your whole life, the way you feel, the way you look, the way, you know, your health, everything, just by making some small alterations in your life and just being consistent. So I thank you so much for everything that you're doing and thank you so much for coming on the show and taking the time to explain to people the importance of all these issues we went over today thank you thank you so much for having me it's been such a pleasure i you know i look forward to i did not know that you had read 20 you know written over 20 books i'm excited i'm going on your website to get a copy of your new book (laughs) so thank you so much Oh, you're very welcome. And thank you. Thank you for being on the show. I love it. Have a great day. You too.